welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that sorts the facts from the fibs. On Lee Max team tonight, an actor who shot to fame as an Ewok. An Ewok is an alien being in the Star Wars films, and not, as I thought, an electronic cooking device. <laughs> it's Warwick Davis. <laughs> bye -bye. And a comedian and actor whose father was a bishop, which meant growing up he was always on the move, diagonally. It's Hugh Dennis. <laughs> And on David Mitchell's team tonight, he's the BBC's world affairs editor who spent decades in the middle of mindless, stupid conflicts. So welcome home, it's John Simpson. <laughs> and a comedian who once went on to a cookery show and made an omelette in 20 seconds. You've heard of death by chocolate, this was death by salmonella, it's Catherine Ryan. <laughs> And so to round one, home truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they've no idea what they'll be faced with, and it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Catherine, you're first up tonight. OK. My motto is, never give a child a one-syllable name, because life has taught me that people with one-syllable names are generally dim. <laughs> Me and you, <laughs> you're all right. <laughs> so, do you mean your own children, or nobody should give their children one syllable name? It's just my motto. No one should do it. Who do you base it on? Anyone I've ever met. Whoa, the... whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> say anybody you've ever met. <laughs> well, say what you're going to say first, and let's see where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone you've ever met with one syllable name? Yes. Keep going. In my country. Are we right? <laughs> I'm from Canada, and it started with boyfriends. I dated a Bob, I dated a Steve, what and they was were this, both... the 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Bob, that's a fine name, sorry. Bob, why, though, it's why called... is Bob, well, Bob a 70s name? Because Bob's not really the name of it. Because I'm guessing this was a few it's years ago. It's not quite as now as Lee, I'll give you that. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't smack of 1970s inner-city deprivation, does it? <laughs> I feel sorry for Dave in the middle there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what, 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 what about John? John's a very bright fella. He's got one, one oh. syllable. I'm on this program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have this attitude towards British people as well. You were just saying that, weren't you? You actually do believe that everyone with one syllable name. I just think <laughs> that if you're expecting a child. You have a long time to consider it. <laughs> you want to give that child a name that can transition them into any field of work in life. Hugh, how do you feel about all this, being a one-syllable loser? Are you well, I'm offended? Not, I'm not a one-syllable, because that is my middle name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my God, that's this is like EastEnders, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> my real name is Peter. Why are you called Hugh, then? I've always because called you Because when Hugh. you know when you joined Equity... Did you ever join Equity? Of course I did. How <laughs> dare you? Of course you, you did. <laughs> so when you join Equity, you can't have two actors with the same name. And there was another Peter Dennis, and he was at that... I was, like, 23, and he was in his mid-60s. So my agent wrote to Equity and said, look, can our Peter Dennis be called Peter Dennis because there's no chance of confusion with the other Peter Dennis who is about to retire, etc., etc." And they wrote back and said, yeah, under normal circumstances, that's, that'd be absolutely fine. But you've got a, a problem, and the problem is that the other piece of Dennis is the chairman of the Equity Name Change Committee. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't see yourself as a one-syllable name, really? God, no. No, no. no. <laughs> What's your partner's name? My partner moved to Japan this morning, so... What was his name? I think we broke up. Uh, <laughs> are you serious? You think you broke up this morning? I think so, because he just you moved to... You think so? <laughs> wow. Lee, Lee, move Lee. on. Yeah. <laughs> Did he have a one-syllable name? No, his name's Alex. Alex? Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, lovely or, Alex. as you'll now call him, Al. <laughs> <laughs> or X. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. Can I ask a question? So, you, you live by this, this rule, 
But have you ever thought about the psychology? What's going on here? I have thought it through. I think that dim parents just have dim children. <laughs> Can I just say, both my parents had one-syllable names. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is all starting to stack yeah. up. <laughs> So what do you think, Lee? Is she telling the truth or has she made this all up? Under normal circumstances, I would say she's just saying any old rubbish, but she's under a lot of stress at the moment because <laughs> she broke up with someone, not like last week or a couple of this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's added a new little energy to the room, hasn't it? Well, you know, if it is her main motto, and, and I'm sorry to hear that, that Alex has gone, but then he's got two <laughs> syllables, so you, it doesn't really work, does it? Because obviously he is dim, leaving you. Aww. Yeah, so... Aww. That was quite good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it's uh, a but, lie? Yeah, I, I tend to think that, yeah. And you think...? I think it's a lie. We'd we better go lie, then. You're gonna say lie? I hope it's a lie. OK. <laughs> Catherine, was it the truth, or were you telling a lie? It was a lie! I lied about Ooh. it all! <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Catherine doesn't go by the motto, never give a child a one-syllable name. Uh, Warwick, you're next. Oh. A possession. Ah, there'll be a box under your desk. There is. You, uh, put the object that's in the box on the desk first and then read the card, please. This is the bottle of hand gel I used to wash my hands before I handle my main bottle of hand gel. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can see the reasoning behind that. <laughs> so, so uh, explain your process. In this day and age, you have to be very conscious of germs. And, mm. um, and I meet a lot of people and have to shake their hands, and some of them, you know... Are diseased. ...potentially a bit unsavoury. <laughs> yeah. So I will have a, a bottle of hand gel, cleanse my hands, then I can get the other bottle of hand gel now, that the, yeah. the outside of which... That, so the second it's bottle remains pure the whole time. Very pure. Yeah. But if you take the bottle in the hand you didn't shake yes, the yeah. person's hand with, so that hand is clean, all you need to do is just pour it on both hands, you'll have no problem. Yeah, well, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how all this started, and I think there is some sort <laughs> it of... It started when you picked up that box and opened it. <laughs> There is some sort of trauma that I've got, and it was from a time being in a gent's toilet. Don't. Um, <laughs> and what happened was, I have trouble reaching things in the toilets, you see. And, and one occasion I went... What are you trying to reach for? Went over... <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you need this stuff. <laughs> this is how I developed. I, I, I squirted some of the cream soap on. <laughs> right, that, <laughs> Then I realised I couldn't reach the tap. <laughs> From that moment on, I, I, I pack a couple of bottles of hand gel. How soon after meeting us, we were all here about tea time today, <laughs> weren't mm. we? How soon after you came in with a lovely yeah. day, great to see you again, we were sh everyone was shaking hands. How soon after that did you scurry away, <laughs> <laughs> reach into your pockets and furiously pull? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, what, what, what's the gap? Well, it's just, it's just whenever I would get a, a quiet opportunity to... Uh... I don't think this is the truth, oh. because I've had several interactions with Warwick Davis, and I don't think that this is something I would have missed. He certainly didn't do it after... immediately <laughs> yeah. after, I if think. He's, if he does it, he's subtle. You, you, you have to be, don't you? I mean, I can't be seen to be going, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's rude, yeah. isn't yeah. it, then? And he's not just... Hello, mm. it's hello, mm. Mm. <laughs> You know how you can do it. You know, if I'm sitting at a table and I meet somebody, I can do it down here. That, that's <laughs> worse. <laughs> that's definitely worse. <laughs> OK, it's time to take a guess. Uh, what are you going to say? It's a lie. It's a lie? Lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Saying it's a lie. Warwick, was it the truth or was it a lie? It was... A lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. If that isn't the hand gel that Warwick uses before his main bottle of hand gel. John, you're next. Okay. 
I once crawled through passport control on my hands and knees because I'd forgotten to pack my passport. <laughs> Please, team. Where was this? Uh, Brussels. On the way in or on the way out? On the way out. Uh, it's horrible when Brussels are on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> so how, when did you start the crawl? There was uh, a passport official sitting there at this high desk reading an adult magazine. Oh, oh whoa, hang God, stop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stop! Let's, let's get that image first of all. The man is, is at passport control and he's reading a girly magazine. <laughs> first of all, why does he think he's allowed to do this and get away with it? Oh, it was 9.30 at night. I suppose he thought he'd had the last passenger through. He... Um, <laughs> you obviously want to believe that everyone's going through and he's... Uh... When did you realise you didn't have your passport? When I saw the desk, cos I put, put my hand in my pocket and I realised I'd left it in my wife's car when she dropped me off at the airport. And how, how far would you say, approximately, the crawl was? Shall I show you? Please do, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, that would be better. Right, OK. Now, now, and also I get to look at all the... Um... <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> So he couldn't see me from behind. Right. OK. That was the title so... of the magazine, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I see he's looking at the magazine. I see he's not looking at me. OK, so then you... Not... So I, I got up yeah. and about here... Yeah. I got down on my knees <laughs> and I crawled <laughs> along here in front of him. He, a seat with his... The desk was much higher, OK? okay? Much higher. It was about like that. <laughs> I think, actually, Rob, in your case, you'd better stand on the chair and... <laughs> I would not put up with that. I would not put up with that. I don't mind it from him, but from an educated man like you. <laughs> and so here... <laughs> oh, oh, hello. Oh, not on there, Rob. Don't no, 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 no. stand on the desk, you know. No, the desk quite... is made out of papier-mâché. No. <laughs> it's quite heroic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Magnificent. OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the desk is up to there, and I came along like this, only on my hands and knees. Yeah, go on. Keep and going then something. I carried on a bit, and then I ran like the clappers. <laughs> just, just stay on, stay, stay there a minute. Uh, just in case I ever forget my passport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Rob, you're all right. right. <laughs> so, what are you thinking? It's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Actually, I think it's true. Oh, I'm going to go really? with true. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Warwick says it's a lie. Hugh says it's true. I will say it's true. OK, John. Truth or lie? Well, it's, uh, it's in fact, uh, completely true. Oh! <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Michael. <laughs> so, Hugh, what is Michael to you? Uh, this is Michael. He once tried to sell the remains of my lunch for a hundred pounds. <laughs> Warwick, how do you know Michael? This is my neighbour Michael, and I first met him when his shot put came over my garden fence. <laughs> Finally, Lee, what's your relationship with Michael? This is Michael, and last summer I threw his phone in a boating lake. <laughs> so there we have it. Is Michael Hughes' snack seller, Warwick's shot put slinger, or <coughs> Lee's phoneless friend? David's team, where do you want to start? Oh, shall we start with Hugh? 
Um, what was this lunch and where were you having it? Uh, it was in the cafe in Cornwall. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, that Michael used to run. And I had, um, well, I had a, a sandwich, I think. Now, I knew nothing about this selling of my lunch until much later. Well, I was told by a friend that, in fact, what had happened was that Michael <laughs> had <laughs> set up this thing in the cafe called um, the Museum of Celebrity Leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the name of this show. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I remember, it's a sort of a little jar with the leftover a of jar. the particular person. Sort of like a specimen bottle. It wasn't like a proper leftover. It was just essentially crumbs. It was crumbs then put into a glass. <laughs> No, well, it wasn't just me, it was various celebrities. Fa various... Who are the other celebrities? That yeah, featured? Jan Leeming. <laughs> I'll tell you what, at the moment, you are the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael Winner, I think, was there. Oh, right. Um, and... Prince Charles. <laughs> wow! Prince Charles. Prince Charles. <laughs> Do you know what Prince Charles had left? I think it was bread and butter pudding. <laughs> <laughs> How much did it go for in the end? I don't know. Surely you know how much your own oh, memorabilia... No. The only bit of memorabilia I do know about was is on eBay, my autograph, £1.35. <laughs> <laughs> on no. a £5 note, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you like to ask next? So, uh, Warwick. Michael is your next-door neighbour. Yes. What does Michael do for a living that he can afford to live next to you? <laughs> <laughs> so he's a very successful uh, businessman. And so the shop put is just a hobby for him? Well, it was something he used to do in his younger days. He was in the army and they used to have a sort of sporting event and the shop put was his particular speciality. So, <laughs> yeah, what, describe the incident. OK. Um, I've got quite a large garden. I was having a walk round. I was on a two-day expedition. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> and I, I just heard a thud, I heard this sort of thudding sound, and yeah. you could almost feel the ground sort of vibrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. And thought, what on earth was that? And looked around, and behind me was what I thought at the time was a cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> it made a big divot in my. You, my you thought you were under fire from a medieval <laughs> army. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't know what had happened. <laughs> yeah. And your instinct is to look up, you know. I don't know what I was expecting to see, but I looked around and <laughs> I heard this little voice so sorry, uh, and looked towards the fence and Michael looking over. And then if then you'd have had I... any sense, you'd have got it. Next to your head, lay down like that. <laughs> <laughs> Word as blame yeah. as a claim. Yeah. Well... <laughs> may I approach Michael? You may approach Michael. OK, so, like, one of my many talents is that I can spot wealth in a man. <laughs> and yet, when I do this to women... <laughs> so, do, do you, from your inspection, Catherine, do you, do you think that Michael is sufficiently affluent to live next door to Warwick? Where do you think Warwick lives? In Graceland or somewhere? <laughs> He's been in a few films, with, with no disrespect. <laughs> I doubt it's like Simon Powell's house. What about Lee? Hmm. Um, Lee. Yes. Um, you threw Michael's phone in a lake. See? He agrees. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why, why did you throw his phone in a lake? Because, um, I was trying to give him his phone back. And he was in a boat? No. On the lake? I was in the boat. Do you know Michael? I... no. How did you know it was his phone? Because he was shouting at me from the from the bank. Not throw the bank. I don't mean he was drawing money out. I mean the side. Of it. <laughs> he was saying, "Throw me my phone he was saying, across the water to somebody he'd never seen before, and who's no, he didn't throwing say, quant no, qualities he, he didn't know." This is what I heard at the time. Excuse me. I had in your boat. <laughs> <laughs> what he said? I think in your boat. <laughs> you're, you're miles away, and he said. My telephone in your boat. <laughs> and I thought it was an unusual way to talk, because I was shaking his hand at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I 
eventually I work out he's saying, my phone is in your boat. So I, I sort of look around and sure enough, under my seat was a phone. Mm. But right. why didn't he just wait until you reached the shore? Which is what he wanted to do, what he wanted to happen. <laughs> but I, being a bit more uh -huh. uh, confident in my throwing abilities than I should be, <laughs> thought, well, I'll just, I'll go, you know, I'll row towards him a bit. And I went like that and I just did the worst throw I've ever done. And it just went straight into yeah. the water. Do you know Michael's surname? I don't know. How did you get on to him to invite him onto the programme? Oh, I think you'll find that I don't deal with the admin. <laughs> But it is, it seems to me, not absolutely impossible that the admin people would have said, that's an interesting story, yes. Lee. What's Michael's other name so that we well, can get it? Well, you haven't heard the rest of the story, have you? Because <laughs> <laughs> I felt guilty, and so I decided to buy him a new phone. Ah. And so I said, give me your number, because obviously, you know, I could, his home number, and I will phone you when I've got the other phone for you and I'll, I'll deliver it. So when the people working on this show heard the story and said, Cool, blimey, that's quite fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you know his surname, do you? I said, I don't, but I've got his number right here. I said, great, chuck it over. Well, I threw it. <laughs> it went straight out the window. <laughs> landed in a puddle. We need an answer. So, David's team is Michael, Hugh's snack seller, Warwick's shot put slinger, or Lee's phoneless friend? Well, Hugh's story, I don't think Hugh was even trying to make his no. story that believable. <laughs> and so there's a chance that it's a, it's a fiendish double bluff and that means it's true. I love the idea of a celebrity leftover museum. But it sounds... What, do you? <laughs> I mean, I've been to Cornwall and it sounds like it could be quite an attraction. <laughs> <laughs> Warwick's story, that could be true. Michael, he looks like a, a, a shot putter. Uh -huh. I mean, he wouldn't put it over somebody else's fence, would he? So what are you saying? You think it's Lee? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, which way are you leaning? I feel like the shot put story is real, and that is because Warwick looked up to Michael a lot. I feel like they have a certain mm. intimacy. <laughs> Then again, it could be on the boating lake, the, the phone mishap. It is. I feel like a more likely admin story as to why Michael is here after Lee throwing his phone off the boat is perhaps Michael got on social media and was like, Lee Mac threw my phone into a lake, and the show reached out that way. I don't want to stereotype, but to me, Michael looks more like someone who threw a shot put in the army a few years ago than yeah. someone who's massive on social media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's it going to be? We're going to go with Warwick. Warwick. OK. Michael, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Michael, and I did try to sell the remains <laughs> of the land. Thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... It's David. Last summer, I lost a tennis match when a bee buzzed up the leg of my shorts <laughs> at a crucial moment. <laughs> Please, team. Right. What was the crucial moment? Match point. <laughs> what was the score at that point in sets? Uh, I'll be honest, we, we only played one set. And what was the scoring games at that point? At that point? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the scoring games. <laughs> I think you know what I'm asking you, David. Was 5-4. To you. Three, two, one, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it was five, five four. four. To you. No, no, I lost. Oh, I've seen a crucial point. Right, so, did this be sting you or did he come in, have a quick shifty and exit? <laughs> uh, a shifty and exit. Well, well so, uh, did he yeah. exit out of the other leg? <laughs> or was anything blocking his passage? <laughs> <laughs> Do you play regularly? 
I don't really know. I, I used to play more regularly, but I've, I've what, what now I play. What standard would you say you are? If zero is someone that's never played in ever, and yeah. ten is Boris Becker, what are you? What's one? <laughs> Tim Henman. <laughs> well, in this case, I'm probably a 0.3. <laughs> Would you give us a demonstration mm. of your serve technique? Oh, yes. It'd be that... lovely, I think, for Lee and his team. If they had an idea, they look at this serve, they say, well, there's a guy who wouldn't be bamboozled by a bumble. Yeah. Or maybe he would. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I think this is totally pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Um, shall, I like, I like say... him with the fob. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is just a waste of your time. <laughs> this is it. This is yeah. the racket in my right hand. David, why don't? Why don't? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I... Yeah, I'm, I... <laughs> Rob. Rob. <laughs> uh, you... Okay, caught it. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Are you gonna actually, okay. You're not going to fire it at me, are you? <laughs> I'll, 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 aim it over I'll, there. I'll zing it down that way. Please do, yeah. <laughs> OK. You don't believe I, I serve see, like that? No. I want to see your feet off the ground and put something... I want to see you grunting. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, wait a minute. Like a ball, have you? It went over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Right, go on then. I'm going to I'm going to grunt. Go for I'm it. I'm going to put my back into this. Go on then. I'm going to show I want it. <laughs> You're doing that with your hands. You're trying to get rid of the bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bouncing the ball. That's how you congratulate a small child. <laughs> well done, son. <laughs> you did very well. <laughs> okay, and. That was lovely. Thank you. That was lovely. That was. Well, that was more than we could ever have hoped. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think? He doesn't look like a tennis player. He probably has picked up a tennis racket. I don't think he's claiming to be at county level. He doesn't look like. Is it? He would be at any level. No, but he's. <laughs> I, th I think that's a lie. You think it's a lie? Yeah. Frick. I think it's a lie because he would. Maybe a bee flew up his shorts when he was having ice cream, but he definitely. <laughs> <wasn't>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. the most belittling thing I've ever heard. On this show. <laughs> okay, we're saying it's a lie. Okay, David, was that the truth or was it a lie? It was a lie. <laughs> oh. That noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have won by four points to one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Good night.